Finnish builder Quarken has had a spectacular start to life with its award-winning debut model, the 27. But here at the Dusseldorf Boat Show, the new 35 cabin looks even more impressive. In terms of the basic ingredients here, this boat looks broadly similar to the uh, existing 27 cabin. We've got pretty much a plumb bow there. As you can see, we've got a twin stepped hull. We've got a nice big pilot house with plenty of glass for uprated visibility, better views, better light. But as you move towards the back of the boat, climb up these steps, you'll see that uh, the layout is subtly tweaked in some very important ways. Now, while the 27 offsets the pilot house to the starboard side to free up a nice big port walkway, this larger 35 leaves the starboard walkway wide open and minimises the port walkway to create extra space inside. And when we get inside, once these people have moved out of the way, you'll see how effective that has been. In the meantime, let's spin around and take a look at this engine rig. Now, the recommended engines on this boat is a pair of Yamaha FV50s. You can also spec it with FV100s, and they've had that at the test facility at Yamaha and achieved around about 46 knots. That's very impressive for a 36-foot boat weighing in excess of five metric tons all in. Uh, but with the FV50s, apparently, it will achieve 51 knots, which is a hell of a speed. Really impressive, a proper performance boat. And the refinement is equally striking. With the larger FV50s, you can expect around about 2.6 litres per nautical mile. And because we have a 750 litre tank, so a usable capacity of about 600 litres with a good bit of redundancy in the system, you can expect a cruising range of around 230 nautical miles. Now let's make our way forward towards the cockpit. And as we do so, you'll see that on either side of that aft bench, we've got uh, little storage units. Well, on this port side, because this is boat number one and a Nordic boat, this is actually used for a stern anchor. On UK models, it can be used for fenders. And because it's drained, you can also use that as an ice chest. So they're perfectly placed, one on either side of that aft bench. And the layout of the cockpit itself screams out ingenuity. It's very clear right from the start that day boating is an important part of the uh, package on this new 35 cabin. So let's make our way inboard and spin around to give you a perspective there. The basic arrangement uses a central uh, forward-facing bench, a good size of transverse galley butting up against the aft bulkhead for that pilot house, and then a couple of drop-down terraces, each big enough to accommodate two adults or three kids facing inboard. Now for UK boats, there's talk of replacing this galley with an aft-facing bench. So you can sit three people here, three people here, another two there, another two on this side, and have the entire ship's company of ten arranged around this cockpit with a central table. And that's what these little uh, circular marks in the deck are all about. They're the struts for that table. So that will work supremely well. But even here, as things stand, this galley is quite impressive in its own right. A good griddle a good size of sink and an enormous refrigerated chest down in there. Drained, of course. Plenty of storage space underneath. And this is a very attractive kind of fabric. Low glare, slightly matte, feels fantastic. What's equally useful here is the fact that if you have people sitting outboard and facing in, well, conventionally, if you're sitting here, you'd be divorced from the table section. Uh, further inboard. So what they've got here are these little tables, one on either side, so you can actually sit behind that and feel like you're part of the party. There's one of those on the bow as well actually, so we'll nip up this bigger starboard side deck and take a look at that right now. Go up two steps, obviously that's going to increase volume down below, which is an important part as far as accommodation goes. And when we get up here, again, that day boating imperative is well looked after. We've got a central uh, sunbed, more, more like a lounger, I would say, actually, with quite an elevated uh, backrest there, big enough for three people facing forward. And there's still sufficient length to keep a permanent skylight looking down into the cabin for lots of natural light down there. So that makes loads of sense. 
I move further forward on this huge step through bow, that's very Nordic in its own right. But because it's got this soft touch decking, you don't actually need cushions. You can perch your bum and face aft towards these three lounge seats. So we've got two good seats forward, three lounge seats there, and again, one of these tables that you can kind of orchestrate in whichever direction you fancy to make yourself comfortable. It's a really impressive bow space. Feels secure too, very easy to navigate. And let's make our way down the smaller port side deck and see if that is easy to navigate because of course they have minimized its size in order to maximize volume inside that pilot house. And actually it's pretty good. If I look down, you'll see it's a couple of uh, my feet in terms of width. And these little rails down there, you can kind of brace your foot against them, use them as tow rails. And up top, we've got a good full length rail to grab hold of as well. And quite often with these uh, hard tops and pilot house boats, this edge here comes out a little too far and forces your hip outboard. But no such problem here. It's very easy to navigate, in fact. A couple of steps back down into that cockpit. And this is where we get to the really exciting part. Now, if you choose to spec this aft galley as a, uh, an aft facing bench in the cockpit, then it's good to know when you step inside that we have a decent galley in here too. That comes with a diesel hob and a sink, decent storage there. We get a fridge on the other side built into the base for that helm seat. And if I step further aft, you'll see the aft bench for this dinette is really quite lofty. It's huge volume in there, so plenty of space for an additional second fridge there. As for the diesel filler for that hob, well, that's just out here on the smaller port side deck. And if I come down here, you'll see that the tank itself slightly butts into the uh, storage space here. So on future models, that'll be shifted slightly further forward just to increase the volume and usability of that. What I also like here is the fact that the door doesn't open outwards, blocking your access to the side deck or blocking the seat. It actually opens inwards, just behind the galley there. So it stays well out of the way. And the dinette on the starboard side is also a really impressive piece of work. We've got a table that drops into the space and some infill cushions that you can use to turn this into a double berth. So that's very handy. We've also got this stainless steel rail that's really comfortable, no dangling legs here. It's beautifully put together, looks great. And of course you can swing the backrest for the helm seat right over to open that space out. Easily six, seat, uh, six people there, I would suggest. And if we look over to the starboard side, well, what we have here is an enormous skipper's side door. Feels like literally 50% of that side of the boat is wide open. If I move into position, you see the impact that has. It's absolutely vast. It genuinely feels like an open boat. What's really clever, though, is the fact you can shift that forward, shift the aft panel forward as well. And instead of having that wide open aperture forward, you have the wide open aperture aft directly next to this dinette. Moving forward again towards the helm, we've got a good size of co-pilot seat to port with uh, a nice foot brace, little stainless steel inserts in there. It's a classy touch and this wood feels very Nordic as well, kind of a pale oak, looks fantastic. More of this matte anti-glare material little charging point in there for your bits and bobs and another storage space on top. And there's actually sufficient space here, I reckon, for a compact MFD if you want to stay involved in the navigation. Over to starboard, we have a nice big two-man helm station with individual bolsters. And it's adjustable too. You move it fore or aft, and the wheel is also adjustable. So it's a very comfortable position, as well as a wide open one. And visibility, actually in here really is superb. Huge pieces of glass, very narrow struts, and really very good headroom indeed. So it feels fantastic in here. And the helm is ergonomically very sophisticated as well. Essential switch gear on the port side, the drained cup holder, you've got your joystick and throttles to the right hand side plus your zip weight controls, and enough space on this upper tier for a pair of 12 inches and your engine displays as well. Now, given what we've got going on up top on this boat, you don't expect tremendous things from the accommodation, but when you come down and step to the starboard side, things are really quite attractive. We've got a lovely uh, big settee, big enough for three people 
on the starboard side. And what I really like about this space is if we remove this oak table and get rid of the leg and shift these cushions, all you need to do to create an additional bed is simply pull that out and the backrest integrates with the uh, seat base. So there's no need for any clumsy infills. You immediately have a double bed. Well, they call it a double bed. It's not. It's for a person and a half at very best. I'd say a single probably. So in principle, at least, you can sleep two people forward, one here and another two in the pilot house. The permanent bed itself is also very comfortable, really good size, big enough for three people, in fact, I would say. And you'll see that there's a little uh, hinge here in the mattress, and that reveals this down beneath it, a huge, beautifully lined space, big section in the centre, plus a couple of smaller sections, one on either side. Nice strong ram, so you can do it all one-handed. It's very practical, very easy. Now, obviously, those side decks, as they make their way around the bow, that walk-around configuration forward, well, it does create a fibreglass intrusion there at the head end of the bed, so you can't actually sit up at this section of bed it's really quite uncomfortable. You need to kind of reverse yourself and do it the other way if you want to have a read. But that is a compromise worth making in my view and not one that can really be avoided. That bow space is really quite impressive. And in terms of footprint at least, this main double bed is too. Now of course if you don't like this blue colour, then that's not a problem. This is Lumatech lighting system so you can change that to pretty much any other colour you like. We've also got some decent hole windows, a pair of those on either side. And headroom, though not huge, I'm a six footer. To stand upright, I kind of have to slightly crane my neck a little. But we do get lovely light, natural light from that big four deck skylight that we saw earlier. And if I spin around and look to the port side, well, here's our heads compartment. And this, of course, operates as a wet room as well. It's not huge, but it's very nicely appointed window, mirror, decent storage, decent sink, and a toilet there on that half bulkhead with a little hinged seat on top of it and the shower fitting there. This then is a seriously ingenious boat. More ingenious, I'd suggest, even than the award winning 27, and that's saying something. Now, I can't quite work out whether it's a weekender or a day boat or a commuter boat, or in fact, an adventure boat, but I don't much care, because what we have here is a great looking boat, a boat that feels really good on the inside, a boat that can turn its hand to all sorts of recreational applications. And I don't doubt that it's gonna see lots of people beating a path to Quarkin's door.